Hey, shalom, shalom to all my fellow brothers and sisters out there. It's me again, Damian Powell from YeshuaSavesAll.com. Peace be to you in the name of our Father, Yahweh, and our Master, the Son of Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach. So today, my fellow brothers and sisters, we'll be going over Shepherd of Hermas, Command number 12. It's going to be a two-part series, and um, it will be concluding after that. But I want to divide them up because it's six chapters and each uh, section, the first three sections cover something different differently than the third part. I mean, the second part. So I just want to divide them up to complete it. So Shepherd of Hermas, command number 12, overcome evil desire. Chapter one, he says to me, put away from you all wicked desire. And clothe yourself with good and chase desire. For clothed with this desire, you will hate wicked desire and will reign yourself in even as you wish. For wicked desire is wild and is with difficulty tamed. For it is terrible and consumes men exceedingly by its wildness. Especially is the servant of Elohim terribly consumed by it if he falls into it and is devoid of understanding. Moreover, it consumes all such as have not on them the garment of good desire, but are entangled and mixed up with this world. These it delivers up to death. So let's go to James, Yaakov, chapter 1, verse 13 through 14 in the Hebrew. But let no one say when a temptation comes on him, this comes from Yahweh. For Yahweh does not tempt man with evil, and he is not tempted by anyone. Only everyone is tempted when his desire, as we just read the Malachi repentance say, he's talking about evil wicked desire when his desire overcomes him and afterward if he accepted the desire it causes the transgression and when the transgression when it is completed causes the death and what did the malaka repentance say these it delivers up to death match Amos chapter 5, verse 15. Hate the evil and love the good and establish justice in the gate. Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Let not your love be full of deceit, but be haters of evil things and adherers to good things. Psalms chapter 119, verse 128. Therefore, I love all your commandments and I hate every way of the wicked. So we love the good desire and we must walk in the good desire and hate the wicked desire. Have no part of it because if you do the good desire, then you won't do the wicked desire. Chapter two, what then, sir, say I, are the deeds of the wicked desire, which deliver men over to death? Make them known to me, and I will refrain from them. Listen, then, to the works in which evil desire slays the servants of Elohim. Foremost of all is the desire after another's, another man's wife or husband. Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not cover your neighbor's, your neighbor's uh, wife. So right there is another match. And also we see it again in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 21. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. And we also have Sirach chapter 9, verse 9. Do not sit at all with another man's wife, nor sit down with her in your arms, and do not spend your money on, on wine with her. For fear that your heart inclines to her, and so through your desire, 
you fall into destruction. That matches exactly what James was saying from the very beginning. And also the Malak of repentance is that once the desire overcomes him, okay, so first of all, once once you accept the desire, the desire brings forth transgression, and the transgression brings forth death. Okay. This is serious. Shepherd of Hermas continued, and after extravagance, which is a, a condition of great comfort, ease as one trusting in their own riches, and many useless dainties and drinks, wasting money, Many other foolish luxuries. Think about it. Unnecessary expenses like a $700 pair of shoes. Real expensive and excessive jewelry. Think about it. Shepherd of Hermas also explains later on that, uh, that the rich are giving riches to help the poor. So how can you help the poor if you're spending it on, as the Malaka repentance says, foolish luxuries? He says, all luxury is foolish and empty in the servants of Elohim. These then are the evil desires which slay the servants of Elohim. For this evil desire is the daughter of the devil. You must refrain from evil desires, that by refraining you may live to Elohim. But as many are as are mastered by them and do not resist them will perish at last. For these desires are fatal. James, Yaakov, chapter 4, verse 1 through 4 in the Hebrew. And why is there war among you? Is it not because of your desires which fight in your members? So you desire, but you do not receive. He who takes revenge and stays angry does not profit by it. And why all of this? Because you do not pray. And when you do a prayer, it is not answered because you pray wrongly. O adulterer and adulteress, do you not know that whosoever loves this world, he hates Yahweh? So whosoever wants to be a lover of this world, he himself will be a hater of Yahweh. These pray wrongly to satisfy their evil worldly desires and lust. And those who love the world and its lust are haters of Yahweh. As the Malachi repentance said, evil desire is wild, not easily tamed, and is fatal for those who get mixed up in this world. Scripture always talks about not being a part of this world the, or the lust in it. Shepherd of Hermas continued, but you on, but you on then the desire of righteousness. What is righteousness? Deuteronomy 6.25, 1 John 2.29. And arming yourself with the fear of Yahweh. See Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Proverbs 9, 10. Resist them, for the fear of Yahweh dwells in good desire. But if evil desires see you armed with the fear of Elohim, I read this again. But if the evil desire see you armed with the fear of Elohim and resisting it, it will flee far from you and it will no longer appear to you for it fears your armor. James chapter 4 verse 7. Submit yourselves then to Elohim. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Why? Because he fears your armor. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 through 17. And what is the armor? And put on the whole armor of Elohim. So that you may be able to stand against the strategies of the accuser the devil for our conflict is not with flesh and blood but with principalities with authority with possessors of this dark world and the evil spirits that are under heaven therefore put on the whole armor of elohim that you may be able to meet the evil one and being in all respects prepared may stand firm stand up therefore and gird your loins with truth 
what is truth? Psalms 119 verse 142, Psalms 119 verse, verse six, 160, the Torah. And put on the breastplate of righteousness again, Deuteronomy 6.25, the Torah, keeping the commandments. And to thin your feet with the preparation of the good news of peace, proclaiming Yeshua HaMashiach. And now, take to you the confidence of faith, Habakkuk 2.4. For the righteous shall live by faith, by which you will have power to quench all the fiery darts of the evil one and put on the helmet of salvation and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Elohim. My fellow brothers and sisters, when you are equipped with this, Satan will flee far from you. Evil desire will flee far from you because evil desire is the daughter of the devil, the synonymous. Shepherd of Hermas continued, go then garland with the crown which you have gained for victory over it to the desire of righteousness and delivering up to it the prize which you have received. Serve it even as it wishes. If you serve good desire and be subject to it, you will gain the mastery over the evil desire and make it subject to you even as you wish. Hallelujah. Chapter 3, I should like to know, say I, in what way I ought to serve good desire. Here, says he, you will practice righteousness and virtue, truth and the fear of Yahweh, faith and meekness and whatsoever excellences are like to these. Practicing these, you will be well-pleasing servant of Elohim and you will live to Elohim. And everyone who shall serve good desire shall live to Elohim. He concluded the 12 commandments and said to me, You have now these commandments. Walk in them and exhort your hearers. The same way I'm exhorting it to all of my fellow brothers and sisters today that their repentance may be pure during the remainder of their life. Fulfill carefully this ministry, which I now entrust to you, and you will accomplish much. For you will find favor among those who are to repent, and they will give heed to your words. For I will be with you and I will, com I will, be with you and will compel them to obey you. I say to him, sir, these commandments are great and good and esteemed, fit, fitted to gladden the heart of the man who can perform them. But I do not know if these commandments can be kept by man because they are exceedingly hard. He answered and said to me, if you lay it down as a certain, if you lay it down as certain that they can be kept, then you will easily keep them and they will not be hard. But if you come to imagine that you cannot, that they cannot be kept by man, but if you come to imagine that they cannot be kept by man, then you will not keep them. Now I say to you, if you do not keep them, but neglect them, you will not be saved nor your children, nor your house, since you have already determined for yourself that these commandments cannot be kept by man. There it is. Elohim willing, part two, next week, will be a discussion about if the commandments are too hard to keep, and if the Malaka repentance agrees with what Christianity says is that the commandments are impossible to keep and bondage. So that will be the final part of the 12th commandment, Elohim willing. May our Father Yahweh bless you in Yeshua HaMashiach's name and Shalom.